you want to immerse yourself in Japan, then you come to Tokyo. And if you want to immerse yourself in Tokyo, then you come here to Shibuya, the world's busiest intersection. And just like the rest of Japan, it's congested, but it's clean. It's heavily populated, but everyone's so polite. And it's contradictions like this that make Japan so fascinating. Twenty-four-seven. This intersection is the buzzing hub of Tokyo, one of the most densely populated cities on Earth. And Shibuya is a snapshot of the Tokyo you expect to see, with its big crowds, billboards, and bright lights. But as we're about to discover, there is so much more, both to this city and this incredible country. Over the next three weeks on Getaway, we'll be exploring some of Japan's most intriguing cities and most wonderful sights on Scenic's Essential Japan Adventure. From the awe-inspiring Mount Fuji, through to the ancient capitals of Kyoto and Nara, the historic city of Hiroshima, and the beauty of Miyajima Island. What do you love about living here? I really like the energy of Tokyo. You might have seen some girls in a funky fashion. I've so seen the funky we girls. We do have very new stuff, but at the same time, we have very traditional, te beautiful temples and shrines. And I really like this mixture of uh, old tradition and the new culture. It is lovely to see the parks and the nature and how much you cherish nature, but then also the backdrop of the skyscrapers. It's, it's an interesting juxtaposition. Tokyo is split up into over 40 distinct districts, or wards as the locals call them. From the bright and bustling streets of Shibuya, to the old town ambience of neighbourhoods like Yanaka. I'm liking Yanaka. Like it? Yes. Yeah, it's nice, right? It is. It's very quiet, even though it's right in the middle of a city that has 34 million people. Yeah, because the streets are very small, so th there aren't so many cars in the uh, pedestrian friendly area. Toshio tells me Yanaka is reminiscent of the Tokyo of decades past. This area uh, kind of reminds me of my childhood. Oh, you're going to get nostalgic. See, like all shop like this. Oh yes. Rice, rice cracker shop. So I mean, obviously in Japan there are lots of convenience stores as there are around the world. But how nice to have something that's original. Yeah, it's nice, right? Come on, I'll shout you some rice crackers. You're going to have to do the ordering. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't speak Japanese. Oh. Akiyaba is known as the nerdy neighbourhood, the centre of electronics, gaming, and cartoons. And then there's Shinjuku right in the centre of it all with its skyscrapers and department stores. It's great to be part of a bustling city, but it's also really lovely to step back and just enjoy it from afar, and that's what we're doing tonight. We're on board what the Japanese call a yakatabuni, Traditionally used centuries ago to entertain guests and now revived for that same purpose and tonight for the exclusive use of our scenic group. Taking in the lights of this lively city is a sight to behold and already Tokyo is working its charm as we get started on this grand adventure with scenic. It. The city is so clean, everything is precision driven. I uh, can't believe it. For the Tokyo Olympics coming up in 2020, they're really running the right way. While the lights steal the show above deck, below deck, it's another story. Tokyo 
Tokyo holds the title of being the busiest metropolis on the planet. And it's the starting point of our essential Japan journey with Scenic. Soaring high above the city is the Sky Tree Tower, Tokyo's tallest building and its landmark attraction. As Tokyo expands this way and also up, they needed to build the Tokyo Sky Tower at 634 metres. Its main function is to get that television signal out. Now, as Australians on average watch two hours and 39 minutes of television every day, we all know the importance of getting that television signal out. Hello. <laughs> There's two levels of observation decks and endless views. It's from this height that you get a true sense of the size of Tokyo with its population of 13 million. If you include the outerlying areas, it's a total of 34 million people. You can see little shrines dotted in next to the skyscrapers. It's constantly changing landscape, and I'm sure if I came here in six months time, it would be different again. One area that's managed to retain its old world charm is Asakusa, full of hidden streets and alleys and the home of many of Tokyo's temples, including Sensoji, its most popular. What's the name of this, Toshio? This gate is called Kaminari Mon, which, which means Thunder Gate. Oh, right up my alley. I'm a weather presenter. I like it. Okay. <laughs> Thunder Gate. Thunder gate. Would you say that Sensoji Temple is really the ancient heart of Tokyo? Yes, this is the, the oldest temple in Tokyo. And it's not just this temple, is it? It's everything around it as well. Yes, uh, the pagoda, the big beautiful gates. People come here to pray for their health, the happiness of their family, and for the prosperity. This 7th century Buddhist temple has become a place of pilgrimage for people from around the world. So what happens here, Toshio? This is uh, it's a Buddhism tradition to put incense before you pray. And people put the smoke onto your body. For example, if you have an uh, injury, you can heal your injury. If you want to be beautiful, you can put it on your face. If you want to be smart... Oh yeah, I need bucket loads of that. Yeah. <laughs> If you think big cities are overwhelming, well, they can be, but all through Tokyo you'll find little havens of tranquility or enormous havens of tranquility. The Meiji Shrine and Gardens is 73 hectares and it has over 100,000 trees that have been donated from all over Japan. Oxygen therapy? Tick. The Shrine Complex is about a 10-minute stroll through the forest. And what a grand entrance it is. These gates are magnificent. Actually, this gate is the biggest wooden tree gate in Japan. And each pillar is made of one piece of wood. From one tree? Yes. Oh, that's incredible. These little pockets of calm are a welcome relief in this busy city and many of Tokyo's gardens are designed in the traditional Japanese style with ponds, bridges and even quaint little tea houses. One thing I can guarantee about this city of contradictions is that there is nowhere on earth quite like it. It's a city that moves to the beat of its own drum. <gasps> Taiko is a traditional type of drum that's native to Japan. And my fellow scenic guests and I are getting in touch with our inner musician today and feeling the rhythm, or at least trying to. Next we are happy cold, you are going to have a final performance. Happy cold, genki cold. Oh yeah, now I'm feeling nice. Whether you can find the beat or not, it is a whole lot of fun.
but seeing master drummer Ken in action is the real highlight of the afternoon. to imagine in a bustling metropolis like Tokyo, but Japan is completely surrounded by water and the geography has created the landscape, the way of life and of course the diet. Aki, how many islands make up Japan? Uh, Japan consists of 6,800 islands. <laughs> so no wonder your entire diet is based around the yeah, sea. Yeah, yeah, it's natural. <laughs> so the fish market is a very important part of a Japanese person's oh, life. Yeah, yeah, yes. Um, the origin of Tsukiji fish market dates back to the beginning of the 17th century. Tsukiji fish market is the largest fish market in the world and a Tokyo institution. It's estimated that over 15% of the world's total fish catch passes through the gates of this working market. But there is so much more on offer than just fish. What is all of this? These black ones are all seaweed and tiny shrimp, krill. These are clams and anchovy. It looks like it's all been fermented. It's not actually fermented. Simmer down with soy sauce and sugar and bitter sake. That's why they last long time. So the Japanese used to live on this before yeah, fridges yeah. were invented. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, they goes very well with white rice. And how about grasshoppers? Do they yes. go well with white rice? Uh, but uh, uh, actually, uh, I cannot eat that one. I don't think I'm going to eat grasshoppers either. <laughs> This place is a mecca for sushi and sashimi lovers, and it is as fresh as you can get. What an amazing tuna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, from Japanese sea, uh, Pacific Ocean. Now, I know the tuna is so valuable and so yeah, highly yeah, priced. Yeah, yes. What would a tuna this size be worth? The cost is about uh, 400,000 yen. Oh, so that's nearly 5,000 Australian dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's incredible. That is a lot of plates of sashimi, but Aki tells me they go through at least one of these a day at this restaurant alone. And of course, it's so fresh, it doesn't get any fresher than this, does it? For you? <laughs> Do you want to take that knife? One word of advice, if you're planning a visit to Tokyo Fish Market, you must keep an open mind. What is that? Uh, this is a sea urchin. A sea urchin? Yeah, rose sea urchin. Uh, it's very creamy and tasty. Uh, what is this? This has got me really worried. <laughs> this is crab. Why is it brown? It's, it's inner of crab. The insides of a crab. So all its guts and everything, you cook that up. You know what? One in all in. Can you make it two? Two. Aki, what have you got me into? <laughs> Shall we go? Okay. okay. It's creamy, like you yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not bad. I can tick that off my bucket list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no doubt some Japanese cuisine is an acquired taste, but sushi is always a winner. And today, myself and my fellow scenic guests are learning the tricks of the trade from one of the country's top sushi masters. And of course, the freshest of ingredients straight from the fish market. Wow, those beautiful colours in it. Now for the tricky part. Please watch the amount of rice that we used. But it's important to have one centimetre at the top part. You'll learn nori and sushi roll techniques, which are very handy skills to take home. I'm not good at the folding bit. <laughs> <laughs> which is the crucial part of it, really, isn't it? And best of all, once we're done, lunch is served. Mm. This is really good. I think it's the best sushi I've ever eaten. Mm. We made it. We made it! Yay! Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Tokyo locals in search of a nature fix need only travel west of the city to the magnificent mountain area of Hakone. 
lush and green and full of hot springs and hiking trails, this breathtaking spot is the next stop on our spectacular Essential Japan adventure with Singi. Hakone's natural beauty is only enhanced by its open-air museum. A spectacular display of around 120 modern and contemporary sculptures from around the world. Its other big attraction is Mount Hakone, which erupted around 3,000 years ago, leaving a crater now known as Awakadani. The land is still smouldering and the smell of sulphur hangs in the air. All this framed by the spectacle of Mount Fuji. But while Mount Fuji looms large, there's another much smaller and smellier attraction that brings the crowds here. So these are the famous black eggs, Amy? Yeah, these are very famous. What do they do? Yeah, if you eat one black egg, yes. you can increase your lifespan by seven years. <gasps> so there's five in there, so I'm going to live another 35 <laughs> years. What makes these eggs black? Is it the um, sulphur? Yeah, people said the sulphur in the onsen hot spring and um, uh, iron in the shell uh, make bond together and make the surface black. So they cook it here? Yeah, one pond over there in front of the hut. Here's to an extra seven years. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> mm, <I'm okay. laughs> For a bird's eye view of the surrounds, there's a ropeway stretching from the mountains to the lake below. When you think that there's 34 million people in Tokyo all busily living their lives, no wonder so many of them come here just to get a fix on nature and reconnect. I mean, this is just beautiful. From here, it's ships ahoy on the glorious Lake Ashi. Oh, it's beautiful! Can you tell me about the history of Lake Ashi? Lake Ashi is made by, uh, you know, volcano activities uh, just about 3,000 years ago. And why do you think this area is so special to the Japanese? Oh yeah, uh, this is the uh, most biggest national park in Japan and a very close to a metropolitan area. It only takes uh, one hour and a half from Tokyo. So it's that, kind of like that's... the lungs of Tokyo. Stretching for over eight kilometres and surrounded by mountains on all sides, Lake Ashi is rated as one of the most beautiful lakes in the world. And on a day like today, I can't argue with that. It's also the location of our waterfront hotel, boasting one of the most spectacular flower gardens I've ever had the pleasure of wandering through. Scenic have certainly made sure we are at the best address in the area. Just a short drive away is the Ichiku Kubota Art Museum. With views out across Mount Fuji and Gaudi-inspired buildings, the setting is as memorable as the incredible display itself. The artist Ichiku Kubota was 20 years old when he was at a museum and discovered this ancient art form. Well, he fell in love with it and he spent the rest of his days recreating it for these beautiful kimonos. This one's my favourite because I love the cherry blossoms in Japan. Each kimono has a story to tell and each piece took several months of painstakingly detailed work to complete. Well, we've had a taste of Tokyo. What an incredible place that is. But after the buzz of a big city, it's really lovely to come out into the countryside and breathe in all that fresh air.